The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today, uh, again from Jeremiah chapter 20, we're looking at verses well, 7 and 10 and 11, where Jeremiah said to the Lord, O Lord, you deceived me and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long, everyone mocks me. I hear many whispering terror on every side. Report him, let's report him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. My dear friends in Christ, when Jeremiah began this section, remember his words again, O oh Lord, you deceived me and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. You hear a dejected Jeremiah who's complaining to the Lord. God, God had told Jeremiah that he was supposed to proclaim his judgment on the people, telling them that because of their idolatry, because of their rebellion against God, what was going to happen is they were going to endure this 70-year Babylonian captivity, that Jerusalem would fall, the temple would be destroyed, but that hadn't happened yet. And there were these false prophets who were saying that Jeremiah was the false prophet. And what they were doing is they were ridiculed, mock, ridiculing, mocking Jeremiah. They were calling him the false prophet. They were saying God would never let his temple be destroyed. God would never let Jerusalem, his holy city, fall. He would protect his people. And Jeremiah may have felt as if he was a fake. He may have wondered if he was the false prophet because God's judgment hadn't come yet. Well, Jeremiah, he was probably dealing with a situation worse than what we deal with today, but we deal with something that's maybe a little bit similar to what he was dealing with because, well, we talk about Judgment Day and we say that Judgment Day is coming and we say that that Judgment Day, it could come any time, it could possibly even come today. But we've been saying that for years, ever since Christ came here to this earth and it still hasn't come. Come. And because of that, there are those who look at us and accuse us of being mockers. But when we think about the things that are going on in our world today, oh, with this virus and with the racial tension and the problems that are existing, all because of that, there are many people who seem to be thinking maybe we really are getting closer to that time. And it seems as if Hearing more people lately who are saying, wouldn't it be great if God would come back right now so that we wouldn't have to deal with all of this? And really, it would be wonderful if the Lord would return, if we wouldn't have to deal with this, but we still wait and we still face ridicule as we wait. Well, Jeremiah knew what we're dealing with. He said, I hear many whispering terror on every side. Report him, let's report him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. Here he says, people who are his friends, they're supposed to be his friends, and what are they doing? They're mocking him, they're ridiculing him. And Jeremiah, he knew that he had more enemies than friends in Israel. He knew that that was a case. Still, he said, The Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, so my persecutors will stumble and fall. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Jeremiah, he had been 
disillusioned with God and he still wasn't thrilled about the, the way his enemies were treating him, how he was being treated. But through faith, he knew that the Lord would always be with him. And knowing that, he knew that he would be eternally victorious. And those who opposed him, well, if they continued rejecting God, well, they would face eternal punishment. The Babylonian captivity did come. Jerusalem did fall. The temple was destroyed. And... Jeremiah, through all of this, was proven to be the true prophet, not the false prophet that some people thought that he was or accused him of being. Jeremiah was the true prophet, but here the key thing wasn't that Jeremiah was proven to be the true prophet. The key thing here is, is that the Lord was proven to be faithful and true. As Jeremiah said, and as Jeremiah said, the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. Had, had Jeremiah for a time wondered if he was on the wrong side and if he was on the losing side? Well, it kind of appears as if that's how he had thought for a time. But the Holy Spirit was working on his heart. We can see that here. And was reminding him that he had been made a believing child of God. And as a believing child of God, well, the Lord was with him, he says, like a mighty warrior. And as a mighty warrior, what Jesus would do is Jesus would fight against Satan's sin, death, and hell, and win the most decisive victory that this world has ever seen. The most decisive victory that's also Jeremiah's victory and our victory through faith in Christ. And as a mighty warrior, God wasn't going to let Jeremiah's enemies really hurt or harm him. Now, church tradition tells us that what happened to Jeremiah is that, well, after the captivity, he continued to serve Jews in Jerusalem that were in Judah that were left behind. And some of those Jews kind of forcefully took him down to Egypt, and what he did is he still tried to serve those people, preaching the law to show them their sins and pointing them to the promises of God. But because of his preaching the law to them to show them their sin, what happened is, according to tradition, Jeremiah was stoned to death by his own people, by his own people but they didn't really hurt or harm Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah, he's with the Lord Jesus. And those enemies of his, well, if they continued to reject the promises of God, well, they faced God's wrath and punishment. So who was better off, Jeremiah or his enemies? Well, the answer here is clear. The Apostle Paul, pen these words 600 years later, but they could have been Jeremiah's words. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Why could Paul say that? Why could Jeremiah say that? Why can we say that? Because even though we continue to live in a sinful world with all of the problems and troubles that we're faced with, still yet the fact remains through faith in Jesus that the Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. And with the Lord, we can't lose. We can only win in Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, as we struggled so often in this sinful world, as did the prophet Jeremiah, help us always to remember how blessed we are because the Lord is with us like a mighty warrior. He is our great champion who defeated Satan and sin for us and won for us eternal life. That means that with Jesus we cannot lose. We are so blessed Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Amen.
and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.